You know that moment when you see someone aesthetically pleasing and then they open their mouth and the illusion is shattered like a cheap plate at a Greek wedding? That was my concern with the Lexus LZ, and the fact it was proving difficult to secure a proper drive only emphasized how we felt. Our first taste of the LC500 was to obey ourselves with the controls and that involved a 10-minute cruise up to a car park and back, in the V8 on the way and the hybrid on the way back. Hardly a confidence-inspiring amount of time. The next day presented us with the first solo drive, but Lexus had set up a few stunts along a short, predetermined route including befriending the random Spanish family, being pulled over by a member of the village people and watching 20 annoyingly healthy people dance around us. At this point it would have been easier to review the plane we flew in on. Suffice to say, this was an interesting and by interesting we mean awkward way to introduce a car designed to make Lexus more trendy and one made even more surreal by brand ambassador Mark Ronson's presence. For a car launched with the tagline experience amazing, it was strange we were unable to experience anything beyond the hotel's truly exquisite seafood. We wanted Lexus to let the astonishingly pretty LC500 do the talking. Luckily, after some persuasion, the reins of control were loosened. We were given the pre-production V8 for a couple of carefree hours. So we quickly blasted into the EVs and country roads, lined with pretty flowers and even prettier luxury villas, before Lexus changed its mind. In truth. We were unsure what to expect. The thing with Lexus is that its cars are either pretty yet ultimately uninvolving RC, and X or brilliant yet ridiculous LFA and RCF. Where does the LC500 fit? The Lexus LC500 is the manufacturer's first grand tour. It is powered by either an old-fashioned V8 or a 3.5-liter V6 hybrid and is based on the GAL platform, which will be used by the forthcoming LS Luxury Cruiser. The rear-wheel drive LC500 first appeared as the LFLC concept back in 2012 and, much to our dismay, was never intended to get off the drawing board let alone reach production in a state impressively similar to what was lurking underneath the show cloth. Yet here it is, complete with that sizable front grille and what Lexus calls a front mid-engine design that is marketing speak for mounting the front engine further back from the front. The wheels, meanwhile, have been pushed as close to each corner of the body as physically possible and the width stretched to ensure cornering ability and stability. Those thinking this is a stylish yet flaw wannabe should note the weight distribution is a suitably balanced split of 52% at the front and 48% and the center of gravity is noticeably lower. Prices for the LC500 start from £76,595 and that is for both the V6 Hybrid and V8. Hazard a guess at which car is seen the most pre-orders and then be completely unsurprised by the answer. There are three trim levels available. Sport Plus, which we spent the most time in, adds a carbon fiber roof, rear wheel steering limited slip differential, hug eye seats and an active rear spoiler that deploys at 80 km slash h to name a few things. More on that later. We should note the car we drove was pre-production, but Lexus said this was only because of homologation. What we saw is what you will get from the production line so there should be no surprises. The V6 Hybrid and its direct shift 10 speed automatic, the first for a passenger car, is best at more gentle cruising because higher revs brings with them an unpleasant drone. The pace is solid, but the noise never inspires you to see what it can do. This is partly to do with the fact the 346 Bishop powertrain generates a modest 256 pounds slash 4 award to work and has the weight of a lithium-ion battery pack to deal with.
although on paper it is only three tenths lower from 060 mph than the V8. But the main reason is because the LC500 has a curb weight of up to 2020 kilograms, nearly as much as the lightest Range Rover Sport, or 100 kilograms or so more than a BMW M6. Not often does a Jaguar F-Type look like. The 470 Bishop 5.0 liter V8 creates a drastically more pleasant noise, emphasized by multiple valves that open to make it louder as you approach the 7300 RPM maximum, and is far livelier and less muted. Paddle shifters tend to be pointless for all but track work, but the LC500 V8 really benefits from using them. Each rapid change rewards you with a satisfying mechanical clunk where the automatic fumbles around trying to find the correct gear. Performance is brisk, as 060 mph time in around 4.4 seconds suggests, but the 540 nm torque output is delivered so smoothly it never feels blistering, emphasizing more of a grand tour experience than a sports car one. The steering is a little too light and detached from the wheels, but there is enough heft as you go from one direction to another to create a sense of agility. On the flip side, it is very easy to drive around town. Comfort comes before agility when it comes to the multi-link front and rear suspension setup, but there is surprisingly little body roll. Bumps. Meanwhile, are soaked up better than expected to the point where it is hard to tell it has run flat tires and 21-inch alloys. At lower speeds the LC500 experience can be a bit flat, but the LC500's precision tendencies make fast cornering far more rewarding as the pace builds. A bit of effort and it starts to come alive especially as it manages to trick you into thinking it is more nimble than it actually island understeer is seemingly the default, even with the four-wheel active steering on the Sport Plus model, but a twitchy back end on the hot. Tarmac suggests it could do the sideways thing, too. Of the two models, the V8 model in Sport Plus trim provides a more visceral, less predictable experience that better suits how it looks but the 500HS ability to glide away from the lights in near silence gives it a futuristic, almost BMW i8-esque edge. A pleasing mixture of luxury and sporty, that's what. Switching between driving modes sees the circular dial move left or right, as it does in the LFA, while the handle between the passenger and driver's seat does a good impression of the Jaguar F-Type. You can expect the same intricate detailing and the same craftsmanship as you get in other Lexi. A few lesser quality elements here and there such as the steering wheel buttons shatter the illusion, but overall it is a cabin that is comfortable and memorable in equal measure. It is worth noting the blue and orange we had in the hybrid car is a part of the launch edition and is by far the most interesting, but the standard red Poker and black still look the part. The two plus two arrangement of the LC500 and LC500H means there are two rear seats, the dimensions of which allow for more leg room than in, say, an Audi TDRs. Boot space is somewhat limited for a grand tour. The V8 has 197 liters, while the hybrid loses 20 liters to the battery needed to power the electric motor. But then the aforementioned rear seats can provide extra space for things. The Lexus LC500 costs from £76,595. The Sport model is an extra £4,000 and for that you get 21-inch forged alloy wheels up from 20s a carbon fiber roof instead of the glass Alcantara and leather upholstery and 8-way power adjustable seats. Sport Plus, meanwhile, is another £5,300 and adds four-wheel steering, limited slip differential, variable gear ratio steering, retractable rear spoiler, 
carbon fiber scuff plates and alcantara is applied to the sun visors, pillars and head lining. A useful upgrade is the color head-up display, which costs an extra £995. Metallic paint is £675 and you will need to pay that for the unique flared yellow, which is rather fetching if you ask us. Lexus LC500 Review What about safety and technology? Lexus likes to cram in the technology, although the level is behind that of your latest generation of BMWs. You get a Pioneer system with 12 speakers or can upgrade to a fancier Mark Levinson system with one extra speaker and greater music detail for £1,000. The LC500 also comes with safety systems galore, including a pop-up hood for helping negate pedestrian injuries, 8 airbags, autonomous emergency braking between 10 kmh 6 mph and 80 kmh 49 mph and the ability to read road signs and display the speed limit in the digital dials. Those expecting a baby LFA will be disappointed because the LC500 is more of a comfortable cruiser than a savage track monster, even if the looks try to suggest otherwise. But when served with a V8 it is unusually exciting for a Lexus. It took some effort to get to know, admittedly, particularly the somewhat reserved hybrid. But there is something special about the whole package that makes you feel good at the wheel, something that makes it more of a driver's car. So is the Lexus LC500 marriage material. It is too early to tell, but we came away from the launch wanting more of it. Which is more than can be said of the random dancing.